Sudan has been engaged in civil conflict for decades, and recently Southern Sudan gained autonomy and is now called the Republic of South Sudan. Augustina Wall's family fled the war-torn country and resettled in Olathe, Kansas when Augustina was in middle school. He talks to us about his experiences and how educators can be better prepared to work with Sudanese students. Hi, my name is Augustina Wall. I'm from Southern Sudan, and I live in Olathe, Kansas right now. Oh, I left Sudan and came to Kansas because um, my mother's sister lived here with her family in Kansas, and um, it would be better for us to live with her because, I mean, that's the only family we knew in America, and we would leave the rest of our families back home. And also because coming to America, um, we always heard stories that they have better educations, better jobs, and a better life. They said it, it, it was a uh, it was it was like everything is free. So we always wanted wondered what it was like to live in America, and that's how we came. Oh, there was a civil war um, in the in the south, but I was born in the north, so. I've always, I've always heard stories about how the rebels came and attacked the villagers and attacked everybody and burned the house down and how people used to just run away and just, I don't know, just run away from them. Coming to Kansas is the most difficult thing in, in school was my skin color. My first day, I remember in fifth grade, I came and the teacher introduced me and and told everybody where I was from and everybody looked at me like, wow, he's dark. Well, that's what I was wondering. So, and I didn't feel comfortable because they were all light-skinned and that was the first time I've seen so many, well, light-skinned people than me. So I, I, I was wondering like, wow, what am I doing here? So th that was very hard. Talking to everybody, yeah, I would not know what they were saying. And some of them would tease me, they would tell me to say this word and say it's a good thing and I would say it and others would giggle and that right there tells me that I just said a bad word or something very, yeah, something bad. What would help me and my parents would, would have been, um, us. My, my parents would, would go to school to where they get special attention and reading and writing that would that would have helped them very much and and how to communicate with it, with everybody because I mean right now if I was to get a job and I don't know very much English I would just go and just not know anything about my job because I don't know any English my parents they they were lucky because there were other Sudanese at the jobs they worked at so that made it a little bit easier because if they who were wondering how to um, do their job, they would ask that person about it, and then they would translate it to them. So that, that was that was helpful for them. For me, it was it was I had very good teachers because they taught me English from the fundamentals, from ABCs, one two three, and I mean it, the best way is to learn from the fundamentals. That's the best way you can learn English. For me, I felt comfortable because there were other students from different um, countries that were there and didn't know English. And I just felt very, very relieved to know that it, they were going through the same thing I was going, and that right there helped us learn English together. So I, I've always thankful for that. I was always been thankful for that. While I was learning, I I showed that I was very interested in learning English, and I liked what I do. So they would give me they would tell me the correct way of doing things. If I was to say a sentence and I said it incorrectly, they would say, no, you say it like this. That right there always made me comfortable and made it easier to learn because I knew every time I'm saying something and I said it, I didn't say it correctly, that, hey, she said it this way, so it should be, it should be, it should have been said this way. For the Southern Sudan, um, the most uh, different uh, the difference was um, 
if our parents was to speak to us, we cannot look at them in the face. We always got to look down to show them for respect. And in America, I mean, you, your parents could be lecturing you, and you you just just space off and look somewhere else, and just just roll your eyes and just tap your feet and just do stuff other than just listening. So I was sorry, and I said, "Huh? If that was back home, I would have my mother would have beat me, beat me silly." So that was something I thought it was interesting. And the other thing is just having pets in their homes. They would have dogs, snakes, cats, every other kind of animal you can name. That we didn't have there. Um, where I lived, we would have dogs running around, cats running around, and you see little kids playing with them, but not, they wouldn't bring them to the house. And also the other thing, in our culture they say, when you're 18, or well, okay, in America, when you're 18, you graduate from high school, you, you, go, you go to university. But for us, some of us like to stay with our parents until we get married, then we leave. So it's, it's different, I would say. Uh, then gave my mother tongue language, but in Sudan, we were taught to read and write in Arabic. At home, our parents always spoke to us in Denka, but I didn't, I don't want to say I didn't have the interest in learning Denka, it's just I didn't speak it that much, so that way I only understood what they said to me, and I would always reply back in Arabic. Where in America, um, in America it was the same also. The difference between Arabic and English is uh, the American alphabet is from left to right, and the Arabic is from right to left. And also, some of them speak speak uh, Dinka and write it. It's just not mean. I mean, every Sunnese I know, like somebody older than me, they, they would speak and write. But somebody my age or younger, they they don't speak. I mean, they don't write in Dinka. They could speak it, but they don't write because they didn't get a chance to learn it here. The difference between the schools in Sudan and America was, in Sudan, we would all um, wear uniforms. In America, you just wear whatever you like. I mean, I know there's schools in America where you wear uniforms like boarding schools, but every school in Sudan, we had to get wear uniforms. And they were very strict about your cleanliness. So you have to come to school neat. Your hair, your clothes have to be clean. Your nails have to be neat. Yeah. And the classes were from from 1 all the way to 12. And it, it, um, the way I could describe it is like one class is from the left to the right. 1 to 12. So 1, 2, 3, until 12. And you stay in that class from, I would say, 7 until noon. And you would have seven teachers, yeah. You would, you stay in that class from seven to noon, and you would have seven teachers come to that class. Well, most people from Southern Sudan were are Christians and Catholics, and very little are Muslims nowadays. But they, a lot of them are starting to become Muslims. Yeah, but not well. Let should should they have come from America? Ashan, but let the few hundred kutar who madaris who madaris betan beside the kathir fi fi dunya.